Get ready because this is lock up. So Sly's locked up in prison, although strangely he's out and about happily in his garage with his partner before we see him going somewhere. Now I thought he was going to work or something, but no, he's going back to prison. And before we know anything else, he's carted away by a bunch of prison officers and taken to a maximum security prison run by Donald Sutherland. The whole scene reminds me of Tango and Cash. You know, that scene with Sly and Kurt fucking Russell where they're taken to that dodgy prison, but whatever. So Sly gets locked up again and... Ugh, I'm gonna have to stop saying locked up because that's all that seems to happen to Sly in this film. He gets locked up, he gets locked up, he gets locked up there, he gets locked up here. Do you think I can go through this review without saying locked up again or even the word prison? So let's substitute the word prison for something else and let's not say locked up. So Sly has a chat with Donald Sutherland after he's been closed off in this room. Now it turns out Sly used to be in Donald's jail a few years ago, but he managed to escape with just a few weeks ago so he could go visit a dying old man. It's a bit random. Then he was captured and incarcerated and sent to a further five years in jail, which he now has six months left to serve. And Donald just saw fit to one day randomly transfer Sly to his new shithole of a jail to get his revenge on him for escaping in the first place. You broke the law. You broke the law! Brilliant backstory, yeah? Check this out, Sly is sent to a gas chamber and is told to hold his breath for 30 seconds. Now I thought I'd play along and see if I could do it, and you should do it too, make it like a game. Now I managed 30 seconds, but then Donald decides that he wants Sly to suffer, so I started again to see if I could be as hardcore as Sly. I made it to an amazing 60 seconds before I nearly died. But Sly managed to make it over 70 seconds, so let's see what other tests we can do along with Sly later on in the film, shall we? Uh, by the way, if anybody actually dies from holding their breath during this, don't sue me because it's not my fault. Actually, you can't, can you? Because you're deceased. Excellent. You know, maybe even do a little alteration to any wills that you've got written out saying I'd like to leave all my money to shit case cinema in the event that I just happen to die soon. So, say hello to Tom Sizemore who acts extremely eccentric. Or oh, fucked up, depending on how you like to generalise people. Now, he leeches himself to Sly, saying that he's heard all about his previous prison break, and he goes on and on about it, and basically, he puts the idea into Sly's head about breaking out again. When you decide to make your break, okay? And I know you will. You come talk to me. Well done, Tom, well done. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't have a storyline for this film, because Sly's happy to just wander around and keep his head down. Sly doesn't even tell him to shut up or go away, he simply goes along with it willy-nilly. Like, well, yeah, all right, let's go for it, otherwise it'll be a really shit movie if I don't. See, don't fall in with the bad apples, people. Sly falls in with the rotten ones like Sizemore, and this loner here who calls himself Killer, much to Tom Sizemore's amusement. They call me Killer. Killer? Hmm, that's original. You think that up yourself or someone give you a hand with it? <laughs> so we get to watch a game of American football in the mud for the next five minutes, in which the rules seem to simply be everybody just gang up on old Sly until this guy comes to the rescue. And Donald Sutherland just simply watches. I mean, what's the point in him being in this? And here he is later on that night watching Sly sleep whilst tapping his ring on the bars. They won't break me. I doubt they will. Dolph Lundgren claimed that he must break you in Rocky IV, and you twatted him, so taking out an old age pensioner should be a walk in the park. So he goes to work fixing cars along with his new best friend. And here it turns into like a poor man's, no, bloody appalling retarded man's Rocky, in which you get shitty Rocky-esque music, kind of. And instead of him training, he's fixing a car. That's great, isn't it? If you're into cars and watching men fix cars. So let's move on quickly. And now we see Sly and his chums running around like little girls trying to spray each other with paint and shoving each other's heads up their t-shirts. Oh, what am I watching? This is laughable. And people say that training montage in Rocky 3 with Apollo Creed on the beach is a little on the campside. Ooh, this is amusing. Killer tells Sly that he's never learned to drive, so Sly gives him his wish by pushing him around in a car and pretending they're driving around the city. 
Yo, honey, want to come for a ride in my new car? Hey, baby. Hey, Frank, they ain't responding. Uh, don't worry about it. They're not your type. Or maybe it's because there's no ladies there because you're pushing him around in a car going in fucking circles in a pr no, in a jail warehouse. So as I said earlier, let's all play along with Sly. So if you've got your very own car, go and tell somebody to start pushing. Come on, Tom, push the car. Come on, Tom, push. Come on, Tom, push. Come on, I want to see the ladies. No, I can't do it, John, but thanks for the five second cameo. No worries, Tom, I'll get lost. No, fuck off. <laughs> So after Killer goes for a spin in the car, Donald blames Stallone for it and orders the bad guys to destroy the car and it's amusing because it plays really sad music and he's crying, he's got a lump in his throat and give me a break, this is ludicrous, is the film really trying to make us feel emotional and sorry for the car? Yo, great story yo. So Sly's bolted up in isolation and tormented endlessly with the light coming on and being told to state his name and number. Name and number. Name and number. number. Comedy gold. Except it's just not funny. So he gets more of the same treatment, gets beaten up, and then more of the same lights, camera, action routine. So after being holed up in isolation for a while, it's back to his friends, but they're all moaning about the car, and Killer has the nerve and cheek to have a go at Sly, yet he's the fucking tool who went for a joyride in the goddamn thing. Are they all mental? Did they forget that fact? Is that Sly or Killer? Well, what do I know, because everyone seems to think it was Sly who was responsible for driving. And then he claims that Sly is their leader. Where you going? I thought you were our leader. God damn it, I'm not your leader! Leader. This is stupid. And speaking of stupid, it's now time for the guys to indulge in the greatest sport ever, bug racers. Well, I guess they had to make the film feature length by putting in some form of random bullshit, so this is it. Placing bets on bugs running. And as always, it's time to play along at home. Now my money's on the worm, mainly because the caterpillar looks dead. But these are the only insects I could find, so there you go. Go! Move! Move, goddammit! He shoots, he scores! Come on, worm! Go, go, go! He did it! The worm won! That was good. See? Lots of fun to be had when playing your own stupid version of a stupid game from a stupid film like Lock Up. Please note, this caterpillar is not injured during the making of this video, because I think it was dead. So after a while, Killer is killed by the bad guys, although by this point he's no longer called Killer. He's now called First Base, which is just as lame. So after this guy in a wheelchair tells Sly he's getting out of prison. Oh shit, I just said prison, god damn it. Oh well. So anyway, after he's told Sly that he's getting out tomorrow, he threatens to kill Sly's girlfriend. Oh, oh come on, he just walked off. How is he a cripple? So Sly has to break out of the jail, oh I might as well just say prison now, that same night. I mean it's hardly escape from Alcatraz or prison break, but when Sly's gonna break out of somewhere it's got to be good. And Sizemore joins him just for shits and giggles. They overpower a guard, pull off a vent, jump down, run through some water, pull a metal fence to pieces and it's a setup. Bollocks! So Sly gets in a few of his usual trademark cries. <laughs> fights back against all the guards, does a few more trademark cries and by now it's just your standard Stallone action film but hey, that's no bad thing, it's just not that great kind of reminds me of that Van Damme bollocks called Death Warrant Come on! So Tom Sizemore thinks that death is the best way to make amends for being in this shitty film and he kills himself along with his fat shit guard. Tom's words, not mine. You fat piece of shit. And also this guy's words. You fat piece of shit. Fat shit guard. So everyone thinks that Sly's escaped through the pipes but shock horror, he pops up in Donald's office and tells him that he's not going to spend the rest of his life running. I'm not going to spend my life running from you. So strap Don up into the old electric chair, charge it up, wait for all the guards to appear with guns and then let's rock and roll. Oh, what? 
Oh no, he was only pretending, but he fooled Don, the silly old dick. So Don confesses, gets locked up, and Sly gets released for a happy ending. Yay! So it's not the bag of shit that some people may expect, and it's not a brilliant epic tale. It kind of falls in the middle in terms of entertainment, and it's a decent Sly movie, worth watching for the amusing car scene alone. 6 out of 10.